Hi folks, welcome to this lesson on integration by substitution. We're going to start off by looking at a pretty rough looking integral here, where we find the integral of x squared plus 3x all to the 4 times 2x plus 3. We don't have a product rule for integration at this point, um, and we don't really have a chain rule, but somehow we can still integrate this. People with sort of good insight will often just come up with a uh, guess at what it is and, and have it be right. So actually, if you guess that the integral is this plus c, then you'd be correct. The question is how? Like, how do we get that even if it looks a little more opaque or we're not able to guess something uh, reasonable? And the reason that this one works is that this function kind of has two parts. It has this three uh, x squared plus 3x all to the 4 part, and then it has this 2x plus 3, and they're multiplied together. But there's something fishy going on between them. It's kind of like this is the parent kind of binomial, and here is the derivative that corresponds to it. So we actually have a situation where the chain rule is sort of playing out, and so we we need to integrate something where the chain rule has essentially happened. So in the expression above, 2x plus 3 is the derivative of x squared plus 3x. And that makes this work out. So sometimes we need to integrate functions where one part is the derivative of another part. Generally, this is possible. One way to do this is just by inspection, and the IB will always be fine with that. If you can just see the answer and you can write down the integral, that's great. Um, but when it is not so easy to just see it, here's our method. We're going to rewrite these expressions in terms of some other variable, and typically that variable is u that tends to be used, so we call it a u substitution, but, but it could be any letter. So steps to integrate by substitution. First of all, we recognize the expression as having two parts. A parent, something weird happened to my typesetting here, but a parent that we're going to call u, and its derivative, du, or you could call it du by dx, is what we're seeing. Rewrite the, the integral in terms of those variables that we've just kind of made up out of nowhere. And then integrate. This part, if we've substituted well, it should be easy. And finally, you substitute back so that your ex expression is in terms of x and not in terms of u. And remember that you can always check your integration by differentiating your answer, and that's probably a good call. So I'll show you what that looks like on this uh, function right over here. We've got this sort of parent function and its derivative. Okay. So we're going to call u, let u equal that parent function, x squared plus 3x. And then all I'm going to do is differentiate my u. So du by dx, I'm not looking at the integral at all. I'm just looking at this definition of u. The derivative of x squared plus 3x is 2x plus 3. Now I go over here and I take a look. Those are glasses. I can't draw. I'm sorry. Ooh, we have one of those in here. So we have a du by dx. Yay. So I can rewrite this expression now, rewrite the integral in terms of u. So it'll be an integral. Instead of this whole big glob here, I'm going to write u. So it'll be u to the power of 4. I replace x squared plus 3x with u. I'm going to replace 2x plus 3, this bit here, with du by dx du by dx, and we still have this dx here. Okay, so essentially we have u to the 4 du. And that integral is easy to do. Right? Power goes up by 1. Flip of the new power comes in front. We've got a plus c here. And that's more or less our answer, but it is very weird to have a question that is in terms of x and then write the answer in terms of u. So what we do now is we sub back. Okay, there was no u to begin with, so we'll just replace u. Remember, use this thing here with its definition. x squared 
plus 3x. And that's all to the 5. And c is unknown here. Um, so, you know, if you wanted to call it a different c when you go back to x, I guess you can. Um, but it's still an unknown constant. Now, let's check. Let's check by differentiating what we have here. So the derivative of 1 fifth x squared plus 3x to the 5 plus c. Okay, it's going to be 1 fifth will stay. Power comes down front. Power goes down by 1. And times the derivative from the chain rule. And check out what we get. The 1 fifth and 5 divide out. We end up back where we started. That's how we know that we integrated properly. When we differentiate, end up back where we started. Okay. So this is the actual answer here. And the check is off to the right. Again, if you can notice this by inspection, you can save all these steps. But there are going to be times where we won't notice it by inspection. Let's try a few other ones. So in this next one, I have the integral of the square root of 2x squared minus 5x. And that's all times 18x squared minus 15. If I were a betting person, I'd say that the parent is the one with the higher power. So the x cubed one. I'm going to do that here. Let u equal 2x cubed minus 5x. If I differentiate that, I get this. I get 6x squared minus 5. And now I wonder, is there anywhere in that question where 6x squared minus 5 shows up? And unfortunately here, there, there is not. We've got 18x squared minus 15. But that's a multiple of du by dx. That's 3 du by dx's. So let's write that. I'll always write it over here, how much we have. We have 3 du by dx. Now, if you really don't like that inspection method of, of noticing what multiple of du by dx that you have, I'll show you another way in a minute. Um, but the idea here is that now that we've made this substitution possible by recognizing a parent and its derivative, and then seeing what multiple of that derivative we have, really this whole expression is this. Root u times 3 du by dx over dx times dx, okay, or u to the half. I can put that 3 in front, 3u to the half, du. Okay, these guys go. And then we're going to integrate. So 3 stays, power goes up by 1, flip of the new power goes in front. Or in other words, 2u to the 3 over 2 plus c or 2u is 2x cubed minus 5x to the 3 over 2 plus c. And I probably want to check again. So check. Let's check that derivative. 2x cubed minus 5x to the 3 over 2. If I differentiate that, the 2 will stay. The 3 over 2 comes down front. The power goes down by 1. And the derivative of that power goes in front. So that's going to be, or in the back, rather, 6x squared minus 5. Okay, so we end up with this. 2x cubed minus 5x to the half. That's a square root. 6x squared minus 5. Okay. And if I multiply that 3 into the second bracket, remember, you wouldn't double multiply it. You multiply it into both brackets. You'll be back where you started. This is square root. And this is 18x squared minus 15. I really think it makes sense in these situations to look at this and just say we have 3 du by dx. But I will show you an alternate way to deal with it. One thing that we could do is we could split up these differentials, multiply by dx, and we'd get this. Seems kind of weird. And then we could isolate dx. So we'd have du over 6x squared minus 5. And that way we could do a slightly different substitution. We'd have the integral of the square root of u times 
18x squared minus 15. Okay. And instead of dx, we can write du over 6x squared minus 5. And maybe we can do a little bit more substitution here or a little bit of factoring and say, oh, that's 3 times 6x squared minus 5 by du. Again, this is not my preferred method. These divide out, and then we end up with 3u to the half du, just like we did in this step over here. And that'll eventually get us down to the answer at the end. Okay, so if you're having trouble figuring out what multiple of du by dx that you have, well, that's a way that you can do it. You can isolate dx and substitute for dx, um, but I think it's a little more painful. And again, if you notice the answer by inspection, just do that. So here's another one. We've got 2x minus 1, and then we've got a quadratic on the bottom. So we have to be thinking, what is the parent? Like, which is the sort of original piece, and which is a multiple of its derivative? And again, typically, the parent part is going to be something that has a higher power if it's a polynomial or a power function. So this is my guess. u is 2x squared minus 2x plus 7. If I messed it up and I chose the wrong one, well, it'll probably make itself known to me pretty quickly. du by dx is just the derivative of this. So that's going to be 4x minus 2. And now I look. Do I have a 4x minus 2? No, I don't. So this is kind of my glob, my u. This is something to do with its derivative. We don't have a full du by dx. We have half of one. That's half of du by dx. So I'm just going to write that here. We have one half of what I was hoping we'd have, which is this du by dx. All right, well, I guess we'll just substitute here. So we've got one half du by dx on top. On the bottom, we've got a u, and then we have a dx. Let's split this all apart. So that's 1 half times 1 over u times du by dx times dx. We've done it properly. The dx's will always go away, and we'll be left with uh, du. Or 1 half 1 over u du. And there we go. That should be a fairly simple expression to anti-differentiate or to integrate. Getting there was a bit of a trip, though. So I just made sure I split things apart until I could see something that was, uh, that was easier to integrate. When I integrate, I'll have a half ln of the absolute value of u plus c. And then finally, I just substitute back in. So ln of the absolute value of 2x squared minus 2x plus 7 plus c. And again, I'm going to check. So let's check. If I di differentiated this whole thing, let's just say I'm going to differentiate it, I'll get 1 half. The way I like to do logarithmic differentiation is to sing. Original on the bottom, derivative on the top. And if I multiply that whole thing by a half, well, then I'll get 2x minus 1 up top and 2x squared minus 2x plus 7. Yep, it must have worked out. So recapping the steps here, we need to recognize that the expression has two parts, a parent and its derivative, and then we rewrite in terms of u and du. I guess one part of the question that we haven't answered is, when do we use integration by substitution? And basically, it's if you have a mess to integrate. Now, in the IBAASL course, we don't have any other sort of advanced techniques for integration to use. So this is going to be the one. Uh, if you're in some other curriculum, you might have integration by parts or partial fractions. Um, but this is our jam for, uh, for the AASL course. If you're dealing with other courses, you're just asking the question, do I have a situation where I have the parent 
and its derivative. So in this one here, I think it's really fishy that we have a 3x squared minus 4 up here. And that's because I'm seeing a negative 12x here. These two things are related to each other, and I think the parent is this. And its derivative would be 6x. Uh, but I don't have 6x. I have negative 12x. That is negative 2 du by dx's. So I'm going to write that here. We have negative 2 du by dx. And now I can just make those substitutions. So where we had negative 12x, I can write negative 2 du by dx. And that's multiplied by e to the u times dx. Let's rearrange a little bit. Those dx's are going to divide out. And we have negative 2 e to the u du. And that is super easy to integrate. It's just going to become e to the u. And we sub back in. Negative 2 e to the 3x squared minus 4 plus c. Once again, we'll check. Right? So if we checked, we differentiate e to the glob or to the whatever is just the same thing. Then the chain rule says we multiply by the, the derivative of this, of the 3x squared minus 4. And that would get us back where we started. Yay! So we've no, we know we've done it right. Sometimes in these exponential ones, people will try something like this. And I just want to go through this wrong turn and show how you don't have to worry too much about it because the instant you start doing it, you're going to see that du by dx is not an elegant expression. du by dx, if you have e to the 3x squared minus 4, is actually this. du by dx is a bigger mess than we started with. And it's not like I have this times this whole mess happening in the expression. Uh, I really have something closer to just what that du by dx is. So often u and therefore du by dx are simpler equations or sim simpler um, functions or expressions. Just to recap the technique, we're identifying u, sort of the parent, and finding du by dx. That should let us substitute we integrate, the integration should be easy when it's in terms of u, and then we sub back, and we should probably check. There are some practice questions on page 563, numbers 1 to 7 for the basics, and then 8 to 12 for the more challenging ones. In our next lesson, we'll look at definite integrals with substitution.